So hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're taking our second look at the Century Of series published by Hutchinson in 1934 to 1938. So last time we went through and had a look through the first half of my uh, complete set now, that all 26 volumes of these, and this time we'll be having a look at the second half, plus a couple of the uh, the Daily Express spin-offs, which they tried to muscle in on the, the Century Of action. So that is what we're going to be having a look at today. So sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Okay, so the second batch launches with 1936, and there were five books published by Hutchinson this this year in the Century of series, and it starts off with a Century of Western Stories, uh, edited by George Goodkind. So let's have a look at this one. Um, we'll put the next one next to it. We can use as a little tray, as it were, just to keep it flat. And um, already by this point, the Western genre was something. It was a thing. So they've been able to pull some of the more popular Westerns of this period or prior to that time into one book. So it's got an introduction by uh, Goodchild. And there's a little list of some of the, the names that are included here. This is another thousand plus pages book. I recognize a few of those. Jack London, Owen Wister, Zane Grey. So some of the very early, early Western authors are included. And we're still looking at a, a huge, a thousand plus pages tome. <laughs> it's cool stuff. Um, this is certainly one of the scarcer ones to get. This is a century of ghost stories. Um, all the sort of mystery ones do seem to be quite scarce. And they're the ones that are perhaps the most sought after. Um, I took had quite a job getting this. And when I did get my copy, it was a bit beaten up so I've had to sort of do a bit of amateurish repair just until I get a better copy but at least it's complete and uh, there's some good stuff in here as you can imagine um, they had lots to pull on didn't they uh, where they could put you know, lots of source material so Sheridan Le Fanu um, MR James again he seems to be in lots of them Walter de la Mer lots of authors as you can see lots of them you uh, um, recognize at Algeron Blackwood, that's a good name, isn't it? On the X Private X, who's that? Don't know. But yeah, the ghost ones do tend to be some of the more sought after ones. So you might find you have to pay a little bit more for those. Or you might just get lucky, you know? And um, quite a, a nice spine out there, like the, the, the guy being hung, the hanged man. <laughs> that's pretty good, isn't it? Haunted house on the front there. Um, the next one then is the Holiday Omnibus. And um, this one, I believe, has got two jackets. So they, they re-jacketed it. Not a, a practice which isn't that uncommon. I've seen it in modern books as well, where they I think there's like a, a summer holiday version jacket and then a winter holiday. But it's got someone water skiing on the on the front there, which is quite cool. And someone just sailing on the on the spine. list of all the, the prior titles just down the side there and this is uh, an interesting selection again it's pulled from all genres this one it's again a thousand a thousand plus pages which is crazy big big books these now the next one is the only one I have actually in an original wrapper and that's the second century of humor so this is actually a follow-up so this is the second century and um, We'll have a look, I'll take it out of its jacket because underneath you'll see how um, what, how beautiful the boards are because it's it's been in its jacket all its life. This is what they looked like when they were new. <laughs> um, sadly not by, um, well it's illustrated by a forecast. There's no sort of introduction or any information about who um, pulled this together. But if we have a look at the dust wrapper. So the colour of the wrapper is in keeping with the, the book. You see it's a little bit faded in the middle and it gives some of the authors on the side. It does give you details of like, nearly 1,000 century books already sold, each over a 1,000 pages. And then it lists the ones that have been published up to that point. It says, look, it actually instructs you to take off this wrapper now. You must not miss the announcements inside. So inside is actually 
It's like an order form, now, very, very unusual, but there is an order form to order different editions of them. So you, they're actually encouraging you to clip this out and send it in. So consequently, it's making, and on the other flap here, so it's making copies in dust wrappers particularly difficult to get hold of. And that is one of the clear reasons why you don't see these in dust wrappers. And when you do, they tend to be quite expensive. Um, and the, the volumes which are difficult to find anyway, such as the horror and spooky ghost ones and that, you find those in wrappers and you're talking uh, you know, a few hundred pounds a pop, which is a lot of money. So the last book published in 1936 was this one, which is The Cavalcade of History. Um, so this is uh, another in the non-fiction range. So if you fancy a little, little hit of history, this was the way to go. Slightly different contents page there, as in um, it takes a particular person or place or event in history and it's just A to Z. And you can sort of nip in and out rather than it being by an author per se. But still a big old old thick book and very, very popular. The Cavalcades of History were, were popular volumes. So that was the last one from 1936. Then another sequel which they've started. They obviously knew which books had sold by now. So they came out with the first book for 1937 being the Evening Standard second book of Strange Stories. Now, once again, this is another one which is expensive. Unfortunately, um, you are probably looking at at least £20 for a half-decent copy of this one. But it's exactly what you would um, expect. It's very, very similar to the other volumes, and they're just building on more of the same. So um, the, the sort of authors you would expect, G.B. Stern, Alexander Dumas, P.C. Wren. And once again, they're still keeping the books at over a thousand, about a thousand and twenty, a thousand and thirty pages with a few adverts at the back. So huge, huge books. But yeah, that's that's one of the harder ones to find, the, the second book of Strange Stories, and quite a nice copy of that one as well. Next one for 1937 was A Century of Nature Stories. This one's pretty pretty easy to get hold of. I didn't have any trouble with this. It's not, it wasn't expensive, just a few pounds. And these this, this is their one and only look at sort of nature stories. Don't really, I'm not very, I recognise a few names, Hilaire Belloc, Siegfried, Siegfried Sassoon, but not a lot of names that I recognise in that department. Henry Williamson, well, I suppose he did uh, Tark of the Otter, and I see there was one on T.H. White on fishing. I'm not sure if it's the same T.H. White. And then the last one for 1937, and this was the last one I needed for my set, so I would say this is expensive, is once again second century of creepy stories so it's another one of those macabre ones great great jacket i love the spine art on that one that's really really nice very sort of evocative um and yeah this is the last one i had to get so this is the uh, all 26 this is this took me the the longest to find so i would by that alone i would say it's probably a scarce one um and i did end up paying only about 40 pounds for this one just to finish the set off but it is a nice copy all the same so i can't complain of that in fact it does almost appear um uh, unread uh, this has got the full volume of carmilla by Sheridan Le Fanu. And a few people have said that this particular volume, one of the other reasons why it's quite sought after, is this is one of the greatest, they say, pre-war horror anthologies that was ever printed. You know, sort of mystery stories, creepy creepy stories, horror stories. This is one of the best ones that ever got printed pre-war. Um, so it's highly prized by collectors of that genre. So do bear that in mind. And if you could see that one, pretty much in any condition, it's worth grabbing. So it's the second century of creepy stories. Then the first one for 1938 is the Fireside Omnibus. So this is like a um, a bit of a mixture of stuff. Um, it, it's like non-fiction, fiction. It's a real potpourri of stuff, basically, uh, to read by the Fireside, as it were. So it's, it's it's all sorts of subjects just sort of pulled together. Even got a, a couple of crossword puzzles in there. Um, uh, a Christmas Carol in, in its entirety by Dickens there. Yeah, and a few crosswords as well. So who, who'd have thought it? There we are. <laughs> so this is like a little, just a little omnibus, a little miscellany, shall we say, 
of, uh, of titles. The next one then is the second cavalcade of history. So the first, we've seen the first one in the last video. This is the second one now. This is uh, events in history. And you um, you just sort of choose their A to Z and you sort of choose the person, the place, the event that you want to have a read of. Once again, perfect for just dipping in and out of if that's what you like to do with these, which is certainly what I do with them. Um, getting to near the end now. So still 1938. This is a century of spy stories. Once again, this was the next to last one that I had to track down and I ended up paying about £20 for this, um, edited by Dennis Wheatley again, um, a famous author. I think he does a, I think he does an introduction. Um, acknowledgements. There's the, yeah, there's, so he did an introduction and I believe he actually has um, a story in here as well, a Wheatley story. But yeah, he's got his own introduction there written at the time. There's his familiar signature. And once again, that one's quite, quite tough. I wouldn't say impossible, but take you a little bit of time possibly to find one. Then we've got the next to last in the series, so more famous trials. Let's pop that over there. So yet more famous trials by the Right Honourable Earl Birkenhead again. And this is very early true crime. You know what you're going to get. It's crimes, sometimes historical, sometimes a bit more contemporary for that period, 1930s. Very, very interesting. And if you collect true crime books, these are going to be nice early ones in your uh, in your collection. Certainly, uh, once again, they use the uh, the hanged man on the side there with a couple of crows waiting to peck the body. <laughs> and then the very last one in the, the Hutchinson Century of series was, um, once again, a follow-up, the second century of detective stories, uh, edit, edited by E.C. E. Bentley. We've got the, the early handcuffs there on the side and a, a policeman on the spine. And the page count was slightly lower. These were these later ones are about 750 pages rather than the 1,000 uh, plus. Um, obviously, the very first signs of um, wartime paper rationing were probably starting to kick in. Got some great names, Ellery Queen, E.C. Bentley, Edgar Allan Poe, Agatha Christie, Edgar Wallace, R. Austin Freeman, all the big names of the time. You, you know, Arthur Conan Doyle. To be honest, this is another one which, if you're a collector of those authors, it would be a great one to, to sort of add to your library. That's for certain. So that was the very last one. And then they had to knock it on the head because the Second World War started and, and that was that. They they couldn't really be so extravagant and produce these really cheap, massive volumes anymore. So what was out there, that was, that was it. Uh, a few selected books got reprinted after the war, but it was just only a handful. But... During this time, um, the Daily Express got in on the act because they must have been seeing how popular the Hutchinson volumes were, and they started to release their own. So they needed two volumes, and they're a century of thrillers. So Poe to Ireland. This is the uh, the first one, and as you can see, the format is super similar. It's big, thick, one thousand and eighty seven pages, and it's just like it. Really, it's just a complete copy of the, uh, the the century series even listing the authors and then their their short stories that have been pulled together introduction by james agat i don't know who he was probably a an editor at the express or something like that this one is a second impression um, they did have three or four printings of this one and it must have gone all right because in the end they did produce a second century of thrillers so same same publisher very very similar format I'm running out of room here but there we are just say second series and this one's quite hard to get hold of um, i'm not sure if this had multiple printers as well let's have a little look here um now this was the first one 1935 this one if i can just uh, sort of get it in shot let's see uh <laughs> in fact, I am struggling to get it in shot. Let me just, there we are. Hopefully that's a bit easier to see. So it's got these like nice, quite nice illustrations here. As I said, it's 1935. 
but they did only do these two volumes and then they themselves knocked it on the head. But very, very similar format, Sax Roma, I see HG Wells. So there you go, that concludes the look at the complete series of the Hutchinson Century of. And they are quite fun to collect. And as I said, apart from a few odd volumes, which are going to um, set you back a few quid, you know, 30, 40, 50 even, maybe if, if you're unlucky. But if you want to finish the set, which is what I did, I did end up paying a little bit for those last few volumes. But they do make a great, great series of all 26 volumes and, you know, the couple of odd Daily Express ones as well you might enjoy, just as a little bookend. Now, there is one other series that I'm collecting, but I'm not even going to reveal what that is, but they're very, very similar. They're not from Hutchinson, but they're from a different publisher, and they came out around the same sort of time. They're not quite as extravagant or nice to look at but they are very very similar and i think they're nice and as far as i can see there's no real expensive ones so that will be coming up in a future video so keep an eye out for those um, in the meantime i hope you have enjoyed today's video and if you have do please give it a thumbs up do please consider subscribing for regular vintage book content and i shall look forward to seeing you again very soon and let's not forget i have put a in the description at my own checklist if you are looking to collect these uh, these hutchinson uh, century off series so do please check that out and you can get your own little uh, collector's checklist all right my gift to you <laughs> there we are thanks for watching today bye